Okay, today we're going to be working on multiplication. You see here the problem we want to represent is 5 times 3. So we're going to take our first factor of 5, and we're going to set it up on the outside of the block, the corner piece. Then we're going to take our second factor of 3, and we're going to set that up on top of the corner piece. This is how we set up for our multiplication problems. You'll remember we did this when we named our pieces. So after you've drawn your first factor on the left and your second factor on top, we can then fill in our answer area, which is this part inside. Again, we're using the area model, and you see the answer space we're filling in is a rectangle that has a height of 5, or a length of 5, and width of 3. And you see to do this, I'm adding three groups of 5. So another way that you've learned about multiplication is as repeated addition. So you can see here that I'm adding my three groups of 5 to build this rectangle that is 5 by 3, and we see that it takes 15 pieces. So when I look at this then, my answer equals 15. 5 is the first factor, 3 is the second factor, 15 is the number of blocks it takes to fill in. Notice that everything lines up. Any line that starts in my top factor is going all the way through. Any lines in my left factor go all the way through. And the ends all line up. It's very important. The next one we're going to do is x times x. So we put our first factor of x on the left. And we put our second factor of x on the top. And this should look familiar to you because this is the setup you had when we named this piece, which we call x squared. It should make sense because it is a square. It has the same length and width. Both of them are x. The length or the height and the width, the length and the width are both x. So this piece is called an x squared. x times x equals x to the second power or x squared. The next problem we're going to look at, again, we're starting with our x squared piece, but this time we're going to add 3 to the second factor. So there's 1, 2, 3. You see me add them, putting them on, that's addition. So we've added 3 to the second factor, and we now have a problem that is x times x plus 3. We'll put that whole thing in parentheses because you're multiplying the x by both of them. And you no longer have to write that multiplication. You write the x next to where the parentheses start. And you see in order to do this, we're going to have to add three more x's. And this is an example of the distributive property. x times x plus 3 is equal to x squared. That came from x by x. And also three more x's. That comes from x times 3. So your answer here, we are equal to, we are equal to x squared. That's that first piece, x by x. And then also, three more x's. So we list that as 3x. x squared plus 3x. Distributive property x times x is x squared, x times 3, 3x. Okay. Now we want to change our problem. Again, if you look here, we had it as x times x plus 3. You'll notice now I want to multiply x plus 5 times x plus 3. So this means that I want to add 5 to my first factor. So I have the x on the side. A lot of students, when we try to do this in class, put the 5 up here. Well, that would end up being x times x plus 8. So I didn't want to add the 5 on the top. I want to add the 5 to my first factor so that it becomes x plus 5 times x plus 3. And now we're going to fill in the shapes that will fill this up. Um, this was a common first try for students. The nice thing about this is you can see it lines up very well on the left. 
However, we have a problem. It's too long on top. And second, if you recall, we talked about when there's a line in this second factor, it needs to go all the way through, and you see we're running into problems. So the thing to remember is we don't have to do that all in one piece. So the first piece we're going to fill in is going to deal with this 5 by x. So it had to be 5 high and x wide, 5 by x. And then we're going to fill in this last part, and each of these needs to be 5 high and 1 wide. 5 by 1 is 5. So you can see we use the 5x piece, and then we, this is our second 5, and then our third 5 piece. So we can see what our answer is now. Our answer would be x squared plus 8x's plus 15. So those are the blocks that it took to fill in our answer area. Again, those blocks are an x squared, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 x's, and then the 15. So let's take a look at how we're going to sketch this answer area on your page. It's very important you follow this process. I have people who try to draw the individual blocks. It's very difficult and you're likely to make mistakes. For sketching it, the first thing you're going to want to do is draw your overall area. So you bring the top straight down and the bottom straight across. That's your answer area. Next, like we talked about, all of the places where there's a break, you're going to run it all the way through your answer area. There's a break there. Come all the way through. A break here. Come all the way through. At no point am I turning and going left. Same thing here. Any place there's a break, the line needs to run all the way through. All the way through. All the way through. All the way through. And the last line, all the way through. And you see when I do this, my shapes will appear in here properly. You'll see that I have the x squared. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 x's. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 1. So <clears throat> my multiplication problem as an equation would read x plus 5 times x plus 3 equals x squared plus 8x's plus 15. At this point, you're going to want to pause, and you're going to want to fill in the answers uh, on the page that go along with the work that we've just done. And then, and here, here's the questions that you're going to be filling in um, using what we've just talked about. After you have those questions fill in, push play again, and let's take a look at question number six. Question number six, we want to draw x plus two times x plus three. Again, I just want to show you what it'll look like when you draw it. Draw your x, and then two one blocks. That's your first factor. Again, it's important that we're drawing these to the right dimensions. Our x, and then we want three one blocks. So we've now sketched our problem. And again, you'll see here, this is common errors that are made. Students use x times x, they get the x squared. They do the 2 times 3, and they get the 6. But there's more to this multiplication problem, and that'll be evident as we draw our answer area over here. So again, we drew the outside area first. Then I'm drawing all of my lines straight across and straight down. Okay, I am not trying to draw the individual blocks. They will be there. Again, you see we have our x squared, came from x by x. You also see that we have our 6, came from 2 by 3. But here you see that we have blocks that are too tall by x wide, too tall by x wide. And you see this other set of blocks that are x by 3, x by 3. So there's, there's more to the multiplication than, and this student is missing some of the parts. So your problem should read x plus 2 
sine x plus 3 is equal to, you see we have the x squared, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 x's, and plus 6. Make sure you're writing it as an equation also. Um, take a quick look at B. If we read this, we have x plus 3 squared. So let's just go and pretend we're doing B here. Get rid of what we did here on A. And B, we're looking at that x plus 3 squared. Get my pen back. Remember, <coughs> square means multiply by itself. It means you'll have x plus 3 on the left, and you'll have x plus 3 on the top. And if you draw them accurately, the other thing you'll notice is that your answer area in here is a square. That's why it's called squared. Our second power, multiplying by itself, is called a square. Now, this square is going to be made up of a lot of pieces. Draw the rest of your lines across, okay? <clears throat> and you'll have your equation. Also, be careful down here. When you make your x and your y on the left and then on the top, because it's squared, that you make them different enough, you will be able to tell the difference in your shapes. Last thing I wanted to show you is here, when we're looking at these problems, you don't have a corner piece. You're going to sketch your corner piece. Just draw a line down, a line across, and let's say we're doing number 7. I'll get number 8 on here. Let's say we're doing number 7. You would draw your x on the left, and then your second factor, x plus 3 on top. Draw your overall answer area. Draw your lines across, and you have your answer. x squared plus 3x's equals x squared plus 3x's. Again, no, we're using a distributive property. Also, you could use to get that answer. You should be ready now to complete the rest of this practice.